Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Awesome, awesome. Hi, um, yes, I'm Nisha Ayu, and obviously I'm a transgender, Muslim advocate for innovation. So, most of the time, most of the time, whenever I attend a workshop, a conference, or a talk, people always ask me this question. Nisha, when did you become a transgender? Right? Everybody wants to know when I become a transgender, who influenced me, who made me a transgender. Right? To be honest, me being a transgender myself, I do not know. I do not know because since I was a child, I've always portrayed myself into a, the feminine side. This was me when I was like around five years, uh, four or five years old. And at a moment of time, my family, my mother, thought that it was just a face. You know, I love cute here, you know, Tromil here. It's a cute boy, it's okay, he'll become a boy later on, right? But no. That's my mom, by the way. She's laughing, oh, my son is so cute. Right? But you know what? People always say, kids tell the truth, right? Adults that you guys don't. This is me when I was around nine years old, standard three. I was in a boys' school, yes, as a five, boys' school maker. Yes. From all the characters that I choose, that every boys can choose for a fancy dressing competition in school, I choose to be a ballerina, a black ballerina. If you look at my face, I know it's kind of blurry, but that's me. I was like in heaven. I was smiling, I was just showing myself. I didn't care what the boys say. Because I felt so comfortable in this attire at the time. And that was such a young age here. This is me when I reached my teenage age. Sadly, when I was with my family, I come with a background of Muslim and Christianity. Both religion tells me that it's wrong to be who I am, that I will go to hell. Right? So eventually, my family didn't accept me at the beginning. It was, it was a moment where I felt alone. So after my phone five, I ran away from home, I started my own life. It was a difficult moment for me. But you know what? The more I changed myself, the more I started to portray my, ex my expression as who I am, the more comfortable I feel, the more empowered I feel. At, at the moment of time, from 19 to 21 years old, I was being my true self. But, sadly, in Malaysia, we have laws against transgender people. We have Sharia laws, whereby it condemns Muslim men to cross-dress. So sadly, my IC still says I'm a man, no matter what I do to myself. So I was arrested. Under the Sharia law, when I was 21 years old, being sent to the male's prison, Kajang. And then at that moment of time, I've done my first transition, my top surgery. But yet, they still put me in a male's prison. This is, this is where, where I was put. And let me tell you guys here, being an inmate, in a male's prison, with this kind of expression, this kind of body, it's not something that anyone would want to do. Yeah. It's my first time experiencing sex. Not voluntary, not something I fell in love with. I was forced to it by men that I look up to. And those men are from the age of 30, 40, 50. 
that I, at that time, I called him as uncle. But for, for them, I'm an object of lust. They don't care what you are. When you're in prison, trust me, dear. And you look like this, you become your target. And I was one of them. And when I was in prison for three months, I tried so many times to take away my own life. I tried killing myself in prison. I tried doing so many stuff in prison because I told myself, why do people hate me? I was in prison not for raping anyone, not for killing anyone, not for robbing the bank. Nothing. I was in prison just because I am a transgender person. Just because I express myself differently from the majority people. So, when I came, after three months in prison, in hell, I came out of prison. Again, it took me for a while to bring my confidence back. Right? But, at the moment of time, it was a blessing. Because when I came up from prison, my mother, my sisters, my brothers, at that moment of time, they realized that nothing can change me. Because the judge that put me in prison told me this. The reason he put me in prison so that I can come back as the real man. But did I? No, he did not. Soon after I came up from prison, Thank God for the support of my family. I started to build my confidence. And I wanted to do this. I wanted to fight for my rights. I was unhappy of what happened to me in prison. I was really, really unhappy of what happened to me in prison. So I started to speak up with what I'm doing today. I started to voice out locally, regionally, and internationally. This is me when I was in a conference in Australia. We march around saying that transgender are also human rights, are part of human rights. And me volunteering, performing to get fundraising. You know why? Because in Malaysia, it is so hard to get support, even funds from our government. Because we're not recognized. And all the things happened to me when I mentioned that in the prison and so on. It's just not about me. The more I speak up, the more I realize that my fight is just not about Nisha. It's about the other transgender community out there. When I started to speak up, I get more people telling me, thank you, Nisha, for doing this. And that's the reason why I'm here today. I may not speak of myself, but to speak of the community out there. We are arrested for our existence. Till today, still happening till today. We have also local universities campaigning about changing transgender people, changing LGBT people, putting their personal belief towards other people. The words that we use in our local media, Wanita Jelma. This is a research done by us with the sisters. Now I'm asking us a question. How many of you guys here have been arrested before? Check out the hands. You guys are so innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't be surprised. But for us transgender people out there, from seven to six transgender women we interviewed, 30 Seven of them have been arrested. And not just that, 23 out of those 37 have been arrested more than one time. Again, not for robbing people, not for raping people, not for hurting people, but just for dressing or expressing as who we are. Six out of the 37 transgender women were put in man's prison. And trust me, believe me, they face the same thing that I face in prison. Hmm. 
Do you guys believe hate crimes exist in Malaysia? Yes. Most of the media when one portrayed is the mainstream media. But in reality, hate crime exists in Malaysia. We have a group of migrant pigs, or we call them young bikers, in Kuantan going around bashing out transgender people when one of our politicians mentioned in the media LGBT people are enemies of Islam. So what happened then? We have these young migrant pigs or young bikers going out in Kuantan and bashing out transgender women. And this is one of the cases Another case, her name is Lili, she's not a Malaysian, she's from Thailand, but she works in a restaurant in Kuantan. She was three days in coma, being bashed up by all these mud roommates or bikers, just because she's a transgender woman, and not just that. This is Mona, she was beaten up and she was slashed in a throat. Thank God she, she made it. And again, she was just being beaten up because those boys think that you can beat up transgender people because we have one politician say that LGBT people are enemies of Islam. And I've been trying and trying and advocating to search local help to talk about this matter. Trust me, it's, it's not easy. Because a lot of people do not want to be associated with us. A lot of people don't want to be associated with us. They are either afraid or they just feel that we are not a part of the society. So, what I did, I approached international level, I approached the Human Rights Watch, whereby they did, they did a report. It's called, I'm scared to be a woman. You guys can do it up. In the report, it even says that Malaysia has the most, I repeat again, Malaysia has the most discriminatory laws against transgender women, not only in Asia, but around the world. Okay? And right after that, thanks to the Human Rights Watch, I received an award under the LSD Forge in 2015 and right after that, I was the first ever transgender woman around the world that has been acknowledged by the United States of America to receive the award of International Woman of Privilege. When we got this award, it's just not for me, but it is for the voices of the unheard. It's for the voices of the community back there. It's the voices of my community that has not been spoken out in Malaysia. And right after that, end of 2006 December, I was invited to have a roundtable discussion with President Obama. He came to Malaysia and invited me to speak on the issues of LGBT people here in Malaysia. And not just that. 5th of April, which is my birthday actually, <laughs> was also recognized as Nisha Aib San Diego Day in the US. Oh. Oh. And the reason why I'm showing you all this it's not because that I want to boast about myself. That's not the point. The reason why I'm showing you all this achievement that I had is to prove to you guys that if you believe in yourself, you can do it. And do not let anyone, anyone to dictate your life. Your life is yours to lead. I believe in that and I believe in humanity. That's what brought me here today. Right? My whole life journey is about self-acceptance. Because 
Without self-acceptance, you cannot move forward. You need to accept your differences. We are all born different, and that is what makes us special. It's about being able to be who I am from within. It's about being able to stand up for what I believe in, which is humanity and equality. It's about living a life of my true self, in dignity. It's about being proud of my differences. And when I say differences, it's just not about me. But it's about everyone of us here. If we all can just respect each other, whether it's race, religion, background, color or whatever, and just look at human beings, we believe in peace. Now, let me ask you this question. Before this, were you afraid of a transgender person? No, here? No, yes, no? Trust me, most of the time, people are afraid of transgender people. Because they're afraid, if I were to touch you, tomorrow you'll be a transgender person. <laughs> But the truth is, you don't become a transgender person from all the things that I've been sharing from the beginning to now. Let me ask you this question now. Why would I choose to be Nisha Ayu if I have to go through all those things where I know I will have rejection from my family, rejection from the society, I have lost the I have people shouting me in public, Ponan, Bako, Umbudu, Freak, and all those stuff. If it's a choice. And people assume that we, it, it becomes a habit. Or it becomes something that we talk to you. But trust me, no other heterosexual men out there wants to be like Is there is anyone here? No. You would not want to live in my shoes, Kelly. You would not. People tell me this, Nisha, when you were imprisoned with all those men, aren't you happy? Because it's, they assume I like men, which I do. But, imagine this. Having someone that you dislike, you don't even know, a stranger, to force themselves on you. How would that feel? But you know what? When a person like me makes a report to the police station and so on, people will just know me. They would just tell me this. You are asking for me. Why are you dressing like that? Do you think I'm dressing like this to have sex with all the men in the room yesterday? Uh -huh. I am just like you. I want to be loved, I want to be cared, I want to have a family. I know I can get pregnant. When I say family, it doesn't mean the babies, right? I am just like another human being. And the reason I'm here today is hoping to reach out to you guys out there to create more awareness about people like us so that my community out there will have a better chance to lead will have a better life in hope to have allies from all of you guys right? right? yes! and I'm, there, I'm here not to impose my belief towards you, yeah? <coughs> because you cannot impose your personal belief or perception towards others, but you can create awareness. And another part that I want to mention is you know, about family support. I am very lucky, I'm very lucky that my, my mother, my family started to accept me to today, and I have a beautiful husband standing up there. 
unglaublich transgender women being chased out from their home as early as 15 to 16 years old. And where do they go? They go to child care. And what do they do? Anyone? Sex work. Why do they do sex work? Is it a dream of a transgender woman to be a sex worker? Is that ambition? No, it's the last option that we have. Whenever we go for interviews, people don't judge us based on our qualification. People judge us based on our appearance. Same goes to education. The case of Alicia Farhana. Do Google the name, Alicia Farhana. She's a post-op transgender woman who wanted to further her studies in a local university because she can't afford to go for international right? But she was rejected because the IC does not conform to how she appears as well. She's a Muslim transgender woman. She wears the hijab and everything. So what happened? She brought a case to the court to change the gender marker in the IC. It became a hot topic in the news. And you know what happened? She lost the case, obviously, right? But not just that. The local media, some politicians, the society started to degrade her, not just her, even her family, saying that they are actually saying that the family is the one that encouraged her to be a transgender woman. With all those things happening to her, do you know what happened to her at the end? She didn't commit suicide, but she died of depression. Google her name. She died of depression. And this was not because of what? Because she don't fit in what people call the norms of society. And that's just one part of the case. Let's talk about the, the most recent case. The case of the late Naveen. You guys remember the case? In Penang, right? He's not a transgender person. But basically he's been seen as a boy that does not conform to what supposed boys supposed to behave and act and so on. He was bullied because of that. And not just bullied. He was killed. By who? Students. And people are spreading the hatred. People are spreading the, the message to the society. We have religious bodies. We have local universities. We have politicians spreading all this hatred, saying LGBT people can be cured. What is to be cured? LGBT people can be changed. What is to be changed? You cannot change one's identity, nor sexuality. This is our right. But when you portray all this negative portrayal towards the community, you are actually telling to everyone out there that it is okay to harm people who don't conform to nonsense. So I hope today, my talk, my sharing, would open your eyes and your mind to accept diversity. Thank you so much.